Boom. Starting off uh, today's show with a nice, strong pop there. It was okay. We're friends down at the Revelry Brewing Company. I'd stick that up in the 6.89 region. I've heard better. Oh, where are you at then? I mean, I got to go into low sixes, high fives. High fives. Well, not I mean, Jay Wayne's. Not, not, not Jay's gotta, best you effort. You got to give a definitive score here. You First just, answer is what goes. You can't go low fives or high fives, low sixes. Why not? You got to give me a number. I'm going to have to start tracking this. You guys track this at home. Well, what was it? We're still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go 6-2. Lo- 6-2. I'll, I'll six two. Six two. Okay. 6.2. A lot, lot of meat on the bone there. The six, I'll go 6-7. All right. Not, not, not the worst. No, it wasn't the worst. What would you go for Lev Bell? Mm. Well, I mean, higher than his current DLF ADP of, I believe it's 24. So It is 24. I, would, I, think, I think that's a strong number. So apparently we're going to start today's show off with the, probably the hottest ticket item in free agency, uh, Le'Veon Bell. So how do you guys feel about the new landing spot and, and, the, and the DLF ADP of 24? Well, I mean, you got to love 24. Obviously, he's 27 years old. He's old. <laughs> he's old. He's washed up. Um, Sat in the garage for a year. Just this time last year. Not around sea air. You right. Know. Right. Got buffed got out. New new paint, new rims. Shined the tires. Yeah. Bolted mm-hmm. up to 260. Jay Wayne said. Allegedly. Jay Wayne said he might have picked up a little surface rust. Nah. Any Albert Hainsworth uh, fear here where he just got paid? I don't think so. I think I think he's he's number one. He's already talked about like him trying to play for the next contract and get another contract when he's 30, 31. Number two, like I think he's I think he's he's I don't think he's ever been a guy who's like, I'm not going to play like it just last year. He was trying to prove a point as he should have like the running backs all need to get together and say, this is bullshit. You need to pay us more money, especially when you're an asset like Le'Veon Bell is to a team. You're, it's how many times have we had this discussion where who's the best running back in the league? Well, Every year that Gurley or every year that uh, that Le'Veon Bell plays, it's Le'Veon Bell and who? Because mm-hmm. he can do everything you need him to do. Like in this NFL right now where everyone loves a versatile running back, it doesn't get any more versatile. And he should be paid as well as 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 high as they anybody else sees fit. Like, I mean, he should have got he should have got 14, 15 million. The Steelers were jerking his chain around a little bit there, just giving him those one year kind of franchise tag. They they don't give a shit about his future what if he would have got hurt we're just going to give him another 400 attempts and he would have gotten hurt he bet on himself and he lost a little bit so what yeah well i mean not that it really matters for this discussion but his guarantees really run out in two years so he won't be at 30 years old negotiating his next contract he'll be 29 negotiating his next contract because as soon as those guarantees are up he'll stop playing again but uh for right now at 24 8 this time last year I think he wants to prove something right now too. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? And and, and he's got. I mean, he just got twenty six million guaranteed, twenty eight million guaranteed, whatever it is. So he's ready to roll. This time last year, I took him at one five in a startup. Now you're getting him at twenty four, extreme value, um, ready to rock and roll. You know, um, I'm, I'll take him all day long at the end of the second round. I think he creeps up. We've been talking about this for weeks. As soon as he, you know, has a team name beside him, obviously, uh, it could have been incredible to see him paired up with a 49ers but you go to the jets and you know there's yeah the, so this adp is march but it's probably not necessarily taking into account for um the team that he landed on and, and anybody really digesting kind of what was going on in that situation now i don't, I don't know how much too many i don't think too many people are going to be super excited about him landing on a team like the jets so well, I don't know how the, much it, I do think he will rise some just because there'll be some uh, it's just a volume be thing. some buzz about what's going on. So that I think there'll be and he's in New York, so it'll get hyped up a little bit more. Um, and Sam Darnold's the already a Hall of Famer. In right. A lot of people's opinions. But I mean, so, yeah, I think he will come up some, but I don't I don't think people are going to be gaga over where he ended up. And that's fine. Leave him leave him towards the end of the second round for me. I'm all about it. I don't I don't. That's I'm what not I'm here saying. right now. Is the screaming value for me? Right, I'm not here trying to get everybody else to draft him earlier. Leave him down there for me in the second round. I'm good. But I think you got a team like the Jets. Who? I mean, we are here to tell people to draft him earlier. Well, yeah. All right, you're right. Just I, draft unless him you're in a league, early, with but us. not as a whole. As a whole, you guys can leave him down. The guys that if you're listening to us, go ahead and sneak him in. 
sneak them in earlier than 24. But if in the startup from, from word go from zero, you're starting your team brand new. You can use that as, as ammo, knowing that maybe the shine is off of Le'Veon Bell. Maybe some people are scared of him. Maybe some people don't like the landing spot for the jets and maybe you can get him in the second half of the second round. And you can understand and set your picks up if you can, if you're allowed pre start of the draft trades, you know, either trading down in the first round and picking up multiple assets, knowing that you can get a first round worthy player yeah. in the second round. Yeah. I mean, how, how excited are you to, to be able to, I mean, that, that turn right there where you can snag up two guys and Le'Veon Bell could be one of them. And I already have a, a really good running back in front of them probably is well, yeah. super exciting. If it gets to that point where it stays around this area, to me, that's like, that's like the golden ticket. Uh, right. If, if it stays around this area, it has to go up though. Right. I mean, we're looking at the ADP that came out early March. So that well, was kind of what I'm saying agency. is I don't know how many people are going to get too excited about where he ended up. I mean, he ended up somewhere. That's well, that yeah. was going to do it. I think regardless well, I mean, I think he was going to end up somewhere. I know, but yeah, until I guess you see it, in that you don't know where to put him. But now he has a team, and any team would work. For that 5% chance that he wasn't playing football again, there was that dark shadow there. But I think, to to your point there, Casey, if you got the 1-1 or the 1-2 in the startup this year, and you can nail a, a Zeke or a Gurley or somebody or a Saquon, obviously, from the beginning, and you know you're set there, and then to your point, Jay Wayne, you can't imagine that he's going to stay at 24th pick overall, If you're, especially if you're playing for real money and somebody's trying to win this thing. So if you got the first or the second pick and you got pick 23 or 24 and you got that back into the second round pick, you need to take one of those and trade up into the middle of the second round yeah. and, and position yourself yes. for Saquon, Le'Veon Bell, and then your third player. You're, all, you're ahead of the game. I mean, I don't think – I don't – he could work his way back up into a first round pick, but probably not. He'll probably be kind of, I think I'm assuming that he'll probably end up around a mid second rounder high, maybe high second potentially. Yeah, I, that's well, kind of where I, where I see it. And I don't think he'll work his way back into the first, but maybe he should, but he won't. If I was at one twelve, and there, maybe none of the running backs were left. I would have no problem swooping in and grabbing Le'Veon Bell. Completely agree. If I'm at the end of the first round, I got that two picks in a row or I'm, t- I'm 11 and two, two or whatever. Just like yeah. you said, you're not sure. Maybe I, I don't know how it's working out right now, but mm-hmm. we'll get to that point. But yeah, I like it. I like it. So him going to the Jets, what does that? What does that do for you? you excited about that? Initially, I was I was just a little meh because well, you mentioned it for a second there and said you know it's about volume, which it is. He's a good player. He can turn two yard losses into twenty six yard gains because he's a, a really good player and he's a mismatch lined up outside and it just has to be a team that's willing to use him in that manner you, you pay him this amount of money and I don't think it's going to be Adam Gase is his coach obviously I don't think it's going to be Kenyon Drake where he has 120 attempts this year and just like a 58 percent snap share no, and no. you know but still you have a guy like Kenyon Drake who had 73 targets last year I mean so that's telling me that he wants to throw to a running back like yeah Drake uh, still ended up as the RB 14 didn't wasn't on a great team in a great situation and you know didn't didn't play as much as maybe I thought he should have played but still ended up in a, in a good situation so Le'Veon Bell getting the increase like all the good backs are in the 300 attempt area and I don't see any reason why really anybody else would be coming on the field if you're the New well, York Jets that's the key there I mean Zeke hadn't got paid yet because he's still on his rookie deal you got Gurley, David Johnson, and Le'Veon Bell, and Zeke will be right in there, maybe even more because he's so young. And but with paid running backs, you don't pay. This is what we were saying earlier, and well, actually, towards the end of last year, was just whoever does get Le'Veon Bell, you're not bringing him in, guaranteeing the man twenty six million in two years to Kenyon Drake his ass. Mm-hmm. Like that ain't happening, right? You this know? is now your guy. You paid him, right? So that's what not not only is it a volume thing from you just spent thirty million dollars on a running back, which not many teams in NFL are doing. Granted, they had the room and they needed some a splash. They pizzazz. needed the splash. They do need, but they need the, to keep the momentum going with their quarterback. Darnold, Darnold finished the year Perfect strong. For Darnold, quarterback. Darnold started the year strong. Rookie season woes. Finish the year strong. If you do, if you have any any uh, doubts about that, just go watch the Packers game. That was an incredible game but to watch. And he did it in two different ways. Uh, he started the season 
Dinkin and Duncan to Quincy. And then all of a sudden, he found his boy. Opened up a little bit more. Found his boy Robbie down the field, Robbie Anderson. So I think for New York, offensive wise, like you got Robbie Anderson, you got a lid lifter that defense has to has to respect, if you will. And then they just brought in Jamison Crowder. They got Quincy Numa back. So you got guys that can catch the ball and move the chains to keep you getting first downs. Because I mean, last year they had like the six most rushing attempts or six least rushing attempts. They, I'm sorry, middle of the pack rushing attempts, but they were only better than six teams in yards per game. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't move the ball. They were only better. And they s- had some bit who you're talking about the, the jets, the jets. The yeah, and, says, and they had of like a career, like 300 and some, like a ridiculous one game stretch where they broke, Oh, yeah, the of, Isaiah Crowell game. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. other guys had rushing yards. It wasn't just Crowell having a big game. Like they, they they ran for an absurd amount. I don't know what the yardage total was. But, That's a great point. They probably yeah. put up 20% of their lead right. or their total in one game out of 16. That's right. a good point. So they were dead in the middle of the pack with a rushing attempts last year. They were only better than like six teams per game. They were only better than three teams as far as like average per carry, even mm-hmm. though they blew up one game. And then basically they looked like an offense with a rookie quarterback yeah. and not many weapons. And they didn't have an identity. It was let's dink and dunk to start this thing off and just try to play it safe. And then you saw it evolve a little bit at the end of the season, right. which was nice. And and even passing wise, they were only better than seven teams passing per game. Right. So and Darnold missed time and Quincy missed time. They and couldn't get it done. Herndon was developing. So there's there's stuff going on over there. There's there's some decent weapons around there. I like Robbie Anderson. I like Quincy Anunma. I've always liked Jameson Crowder if sure. he can be healthy. Sure. Um, and then Herndon was ended on a bright spot. Right. One of, the, one of the favorite young tight ends in Dynasty right now is Herndon. Sure. Looming, looming suspension, but. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be, be too long. long. Yeah. That's a good point. So it's something to bring up. But so now, so now the volume thing, obviously, with the payments, with the guaranteed money to Le'Veon Bell. And then you also have the rookie, court, second year quarterback, franchise face of the franchise quarterback, best friend. He's he obviously likes to check it down, and then you saw him grow up a little bit and use one of his weapons in throwing it to Robbie Anderson yeah. down the field. They took the took the chains off a little bit at the right. end, right? So now you got Le'Veon Bell, who gives you the versatility, the mismatch. The, there's no reason for him to come off the field one downs one through four, yeah, and you know just use him, yeah. Well, so let's we'll, let's talk about this offensive line a little bit, and then we'll maybe go to kind of what Adam Gase does offensively and, and touch a little bit more on those mismatches and, and how they use players real quick on Adam Gase. If you haven't seen that video where he's in his pre- that initial press conference with, the, with the crazy eyes that are first just of like, all. Yeah. They put a taco on the screen to like where follow his, eyes, his eyes. So it looks like he's looking at this taco that's like flying around. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> just go check it out. Anyway, it had nothing to do with this discussion. I have no idea what's going on there. And Adam Gase just is just time and time again, just proved to be a super weird guy. A weird, a weird guy. Ace. Ace. Weird <laughs> guy. Ace. Got any more of that gum? <laughs> um, but the offensive line is, is not great. You mentioned about them not being super effective in, in run blocking. Um, Pretty bad. But they do have some, some bits and Beecham, Kelvin Beecham is their left tackle. Who's, who's not terrible, who actually has played with Le'Veon Bell before, uh, from his days in Pittsburgh. So a pretty decent left tackle. He's not, he's not, he's nothing outstanding. He's not elite, but he's definitely, in my opinion, above average left tackle. They traded for Osemele from the Raiders. That's their left guard. He's saying how he's going to be the bodyguard for, um, Darnold. Sam Darnold now and big, big fella. He was an all pro in 2016, 2017. He's a pro bowler, a little bit down 18, but who on the Raiders didn't have a down 18. Right. It did. Speaking of videos, did you see the, the video that assembly put on his Twitter account? Mm-mm. Oh, this dude is cut. He's got abs. He, he's flexing. He said, let's Falling go. Falling lineman on Twitter there, huh? Well, you know, somebody Someone retweeted, retweeted it. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. So wa- he, he, he looks in shape. A good start to the left side there. The, the interior of this line was the weak spot for sure uh, coming into last year. Um, the center is probably still their weak spot. Still hadn't recovered from Nick Mangold. No, and, uh, <laughs> and DeBrickashaw. Yeah. Um, but the, the center position could be their weakest spot. So that they had, I believe they had Wesley Johnson and somebody else last year. They went, they had a bunch of injuries on the offensive line and John Harrison ended up being their guy. Um, and, and I think he played okay. They re-signed him. He's there. There are some options out there with kind of versatile pieces that could be centers that, and the Jets have some money. So they could be like a uh, Steven, uh, 
um, the guy from the Eagles, when 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 Wisniewski, Wisniewski, Wisniewski yeah, he's out there. He's played some center, very versatile, and, and he can play in all those inside positions. He and not, the um, the who was the John L. Sullivan uh, for the Rams is is available as well. A little older, but could could give them a nice piece on the offense moving forward. They they picked up. Sullivan? No, no, but those are two centers or interior linemen who can move around who are currently available. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, which, Wisniewski was one of my go-tos in Madden. Yeah. You could pick him up later. Put him wherever. A, he plays a center or either guard. Center guard, right. Either guard. So just a, just a good player there. Then Brian Winter has been a holdover and been a good player at right guard for them. Probably the the cornerstone of their line, I guess you could say. And then Brandon Shell was a guy that they've been drafting and developing who had an ACL injury at the end of the season, who was always a run mauler, which is a good thing for what they just did. But his past pro was terrible. But at the end of last season, he was really turning the corner. And a lot of, I read a lot of Jets articles on all this offensive line stuff and what they thought and did some PFF stuff. And um, Shell was really coming into his own, did have a little ACL, uh, so he might be a little limited to start the season, but they just signed Tom Compton, who's a versatile player uh, all over the line from the Vikings, which maybe he could take Shell's spot to start the season. Um, and they also re-signed um, a guy who was on the team last year, Brent Kuvale, I, I think might be his name, also kind of a swing tackle, versatile can play all over the line. So they have some parts and pieces in there that, that could be decent for this off. Maybe it could make a next step of being better than they were last year. Added a little parts and pieces. A couple of guys got a little older. They added some versatile pieces and still have some money to spend. Like I said, they could go out and get a Stephen was 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 new was new ski and uh, or a John L Sullivan or uh, add a piece like that and maybe help solidify this line a little bit more. So Maybe could step. T- they look like they're trying to make a step forward there, and just adding Le'Veon Bell makes an offensive line I think look a little better. Now it's no Steelers offensive line like that doesn't get enough credit, and we'll see what happens this year. I believe they just the Steelers lost their offensive line coach Mike um, uh, Mike Mon- Malarkey. Yeah, Malarkey. I believe was it. I think he, re- I think Some, he all effort, effort. effort that. I think he rolled out. Uh, yeah. He did, whoever they lost him, and it, it's something that Munchak? nobody's. Mike Mun- Munchak? I think it was Munchak. Munchak. Mike, well, not Munchak, yeah. Mike Munchak, yeah. Munchak. Um, I believe that's right, and then I think that could be a big hit for that Steelers O line, and they lost Munchak. another piece or two. Um, that's what it was. He had been there for a while, and then right. the turmoil was too much for he him. He got out of there. That was the theory. The conspiracy theory right. was that he was like, ah, "I'm out of here. Uh, this thing's going downhill." Right. Yeah. They, just, um, they hired from within, though, to replace him. Well, you have to. Sometimes that doesn't always work. <laughs> um, you saw what happened to the the. We talked about this at some other time that uh, Scarnecchia left the left the Pats. Patriots. Yeah, that line play went down. He, they were like, "What, what do we got to do to bring you back?" Yeah, right back up to the top. Um, so the, just want to chat a little bit about this O line, and then as far as what Adam Gase does offensively, like it's the age old thing of like, well, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to try to force my players to do things that they don't do. I want to try to uh, accentuate all of their positive attributes and play off of that. Well, you know, that's it's easier it's, said than done, r- right? <laughs> and last year in Miami, you kind of saw him say, "All right, well now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do things how I want to do it," and brought in a bunch of just pieces that all had just different roles and what Gase does again did a lot of research in on this and a lot of people who are Dolphins people and watched a bunch of Twitter clips of uh, drives by the the Dolphins and whatnot and it's basically he's kind of a dink and dunker like he he likes to go outside the numbers and from the slot and he'll use a ton of RB mismatch and what likes to get the RB out of the backfield and and you which is great for Le'Veon Bell you sign the best mismatch possible sure. in the league true true um, and then on top of that you do have a Crowder and you do I mean um Quincy I don't believe was of Gase signing I think that was pre-Gase the Jets extended him right before Gase came into town so it could be a little bit of I got my guy in Crowder and Quincy was already here, but he also now has two guys who can who are a little bit similar, who are good dink and dunk guys. And both of them been a little bit hurt. So right. might as well. If you right. got the cap room, might as well bring in some bodies. A hundred percent. And then you have your guy that, like you said, Robbie Anderson, who can take the top off of a defense, who can do a lot of different things, who in my opinion, like is one of my like you're not guarding Robbie Anderson one on one like he it's not happening. He's mm-hmm. really fast. Like he's crackhead fast. When we talk about guys being fast, like he's really fast. And you saw it at the end of last year. All of a sudden, where was Robbie Anderson all year? And then it was like, oh shit, Robbie Anderson's still really good. Yeah, um, Darnold just didn't throw him the ball. Yeah. So basically, like there's there's uh, game scripts of like 
them doing what what their drive summaries were. It was run, check down, check down, run, check down, deep strike for 39 yards and a touchdown. So like he wants to kind of dink and dunk. And then it's basically the, the thing was as soon as the, they got tired of it and the box kind of came down, then all of a sudden he took the top off of it and took a shot. Um, this was, downfield. This was Gase in Miami. Okay. Um, so a decent setup for kind of what he would want to do as a dink and dunk and kind of take a shot downfield. So uh, when I first started looking at Bell, I was like, he's at the Jets, so get some volume good. I'm not sure about Gase, but then kind of reading into this and confirming a little bit of, of what could be going on there, I got a little more excited about Le'Veon Bell and, and what's going on in, in, um, in New York, and I'm I'm definitely buying into bits and pieces on this offense. Now it'll go as far as Sam Darnold wants to take you, right? Um, and we'll see if he can make the step forward and and really be a good quarterback. But I I think there's a lot of positive things on this offense that are maybe being a little overlooked. Is this not being a great landing spot offensive line wise? Maybe not as good as the Steelers, but and I don't know. Obviously, offensively not quite as good as the Steelers, but I think there are some really positive things coming with Gase. And and Le'Veon and Sam Darnold and and these uh, even the the Crowder and the uh, yeah Quincy's. Well, Jay, well, you got something, or you can I go again? Go ahead. You you kind of just brought it all together there, but let, let's let me try to put something else together. Like you said, I, I, this is the time of the year to talk about morale and effort and people paid attention in meetings and people caring. Like you got your franchise quarterback. Nobody's doubting that right now. People are picking on the Giants for not taking him. He played well enough. He's and and so last year you got Darnold coming into the league where everybody said he turns it over too much. And his last year in the USC, he's trying too hard, turns it over too much. So obviously, first half of the season, let me try to limit my turnovers. First game against the Lions, first pass turnover. So you see the next four games is straight up check down, check down, check down, no turnover. Screen pass to Quincy every right. time. Quincy, 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 forget Robbie Anderson even exists, you know? And so you see you see him get more comfortable as a rookie moving forward. Obviously, the team's up and down and didn't win a lot of games. But the franchise, the effort of the franchise, you bring in Crowder, you re-sign Quincy, you bring in uh, – Osimile, who just like two or three years ago would have been the top ranked in the league. Yeah, that's what it, I was, you know he was, what I mean. He was an All Pro in right. sixteen, I think. And exactly. That's not like a bullshit Pro Bowl. Those. That's like one of the best linemen in the league. Yeah, not Pro Bowl, but right. All Pro. Right. You're, that's a different. Th- yeah. That's not. There's like, only one per position. That's not writers voting on and oh, let's have a poll of who should be in the Pro Bowl. Like, no, no, this is like the best of the best. So you All Pros are. You, you, high honor you, you're all all the jets have done so far this offseason and not only that but carry it over into last offseason they made a trade where before it happened after it happened people said they paid way too much to move up to that third spot which turned out to be darnold they gave the colts all those second round three second round picks to move up from six to three that worked and that you know, so you got that happened last year. They made their moves. This year, they're making their moves again. They bring in Le'Veon Bell. There's not a player in that locker room who's not welcoming Le'Veon Bell to sure. help that offense. They bring in the receivers we just talked about, re-signing uh, Quincy and bringing in Crowder. Uh, you bring in the offensive lineman. We just got off on a tangent about him, but like that's the effort. And didn't they just they tried to bring in Anthony Barr and he spurned them and didn't yeah. go? But any, which, I think did, did they just get Mosley? Could be yes, he did. You Mosley, know what which I mean? Could be one of the reasons why they brought in Le'Veon Bell. Because they thought maybe they were going to tie a little bit more cap up in bar, and then all of a sudden they had way, a ton of cap, so they had to spend it. But well, you yeah, didn't have to spend neither it. here or there. You don't have to spend yeah. it. That's what I'm saying. Well, they you have to spend a certain amount. A certain, of it. but there's, yeah. the, you know, they're 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 spending it, and and yeah. and on it's a frenzy. Uh, they're 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 burning some cash right now in an effort to win games, and that's all I'm trying to say is yeah. you talk about bring in some, just all the good things that are happening for the Jets right now. And you look at an offensive line that was really poor last year and an offense as a whole, all running backs, receivers, quarter, everybody, passing efficiency, running efficiency, everything was terrible. That's how things happen in, in football from year to year. Like you could see this Jets team come out there next year and yeah. just perform a lot. Of, still could be a long way from being really good, Yeah, well, but they I, could be a lot better than what they were overnight just because all of this action. Do you think about the morale that's going to be in the offseason yeah. programs this year? They they spent the money. They brought the guys in. They which And it typic- almost all complements each other. A lot of the other. times, those teams that spend a lot of money, it doesn't necessarily translate to anything, but... 
There are some. These are some good pieces, and there's a whole new system turnover. Yeah, but you can exactly, on. exact new system and everything. You brought it. The, C.J. Mosley's a beast. Yeah. Oh, you know? the deep like, and there's good young defensive players over right. there. So there, there are some parts and pieces on on the side of things that we're not even talking about that are good. Right. Um, I believe that the D backs coach was the only holdover from the old regime. Jim Bob Cooter was brought in to be an offensive assistant who had been with Gase uh, in his uh, Broncos and and Bears years, maybe. And Daryl Loggins or Dow Loggins, whatever his name is, who's been with Gase for a while, was his guy down in uh, Miami, is his offensive coordinator. But Gase calls his own plays, so he's right. going to kind of be the developmental guy in um, for for um, not Tannehill. Uh, Darnold. Oh, Darnold. Yeah, and so stock up Jets. So what, one thing to just tie this all together is just to talk about like a lot of what Gase was talked about it and he said what I was doing in Miami was trying to not turn the ball over because my quarterback wasn't healthy a lot of the time. So what I was trying to do to put my team in positions to win games was play mistake-free football. So I wasn't pressing the issue. I wasn't trying to do this or that. Like, hell, you played Brock Osweiler for a decent <laughs> chunk of the year. And and how many times have we seen the quarterback carousel go round and round over there? No knock on Tannehill, but right. maybe not the best quarterback and also banged up. So you're playing a little closer to the vest. So like he kind of came out and said I was doing what I had to do to try to survive still so went that, seven that, and seven started three right, and one started three that's that three and one team where he brought in all these these different guys the Albert Wilson's and the Amendola's and had Kenny Stills and the Drake's and was used and the offense everything was kind of humming along I'm not saying that's what you're going to see every week out of the Jets but I think and Tannehill was probably a little healthier right that kind of uh, is probably a little bit more of what you're hoping to see, what he's hoping to do with the Jets. And then Le'Veon Bell is the cherry on top. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, we're up against a break here. Uh, I think stock up Le'Veon, stock up Jets. Well, it's not stock up from Pittsburgh, but stock up from where he la- is last year's drama. Yeah. Right. Not, not, not a stock up from the Steelers, but he's not on 16 straight bye weeks anymore. So <laughs> that's awesome. Let's get to a break. We'll be back with uh, much more free agency frenzy. For your pleasure. Ooh. 